Hey everyone, welcome back. This was a bit of a happy surprise. We got the first beta for iPadOS 18.1. Yes, that is correct, 18.1. And no, we are not yet through the 18 beta cycle yet, but this is our first chance to get a look at what the Apple intelligence features will look like on iPadOS. And so that's what today's video is about. Some ground rules though, before we get started, not all of the Apple intelligence features are here. So there's only a few things I'm going to show you. When Apple Intelligence launches sometime in the fall, not all the features will be there. Apple has mentioned this is going to be a gradual rollout over the course of a year. And for iPadOS specifically, you need an iPad with an M-series chip to take advantage of Apple Intelligence. So that means a relatively recent iPad Air and iPad Pro. All right, all that being said, let's jump right into it. If you have a compatible device, and you're running the 18.1 beta, you can sign up for the Apple Intelligence features in settings. When you go into settings, the Siri option is now Apple Intelligence and Siri. At least for now, the Apple Intelligence features are waitlisted, meaning that you have to turn on the toggle in settings, which adds you to a waitlist to be approved to run the Apple Intelligence features. When I tried this right after the beta went live and I got it installed, it was about 10 minutes before I saw that the models needed to power Apple Intelligence were being downloaded to my device. But your mileage may vary, and who knows what this will look like when the final 18.1 release goes live later this fall. Once you do that, you'll get a notification. I got this one on my lock screen here, and you'll be good to go to start using these features. Okay, so I've got some sample documents here I'm gonna to use to show you writing tools. I'm gonna to demo it with the Magic Keyboard, but of course you can do all this using your hands as well. So how do you get to writing tools? First thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna highlight this paragraph here, and I'm gonna right click. And in the context menu, I have this new option that says writing tools. When I click on that, I get this inline modal that comes up, and it gives me my writing tool options. First one I'm gonna show you is proofread. I have at least one grammatical error in this paragraph here. Let's go ahead and hit proofread. See the change is applied and it found one change and you'll notice it underlines where it made the change. I can click on that and it shows me what it thought was wrong. I have the option here to revert to the original, but I can also do that down here as well. There's a revert button in this kind of floating palette here, which would normally give you your keyboard options. I also have the ability, apparently, to upvote or downvote whether or not I think that was a good change, which I assume helps train the model further. I like this one, so I'm actually just going to give it a thumbs up. Okay, what else do we have? Rewrite. So let's see what that does. <laughs> So I did a slight rewrite of that paragraph. Let's do a revert so you can see what it was. Paragraph started with, I can't wait until iPad OS 18 goes live. Again, let's do that rewrite. I eagerly anticipate the release of iPad OS 18. It's actually kind of funny the way this rewrote this. I hope you can see this. <laughs> anyway, so it tried its best. It's It rewrote it. I, I don't think I would go with it. But, you know, it, it definitely rewrote it. So I'm going to revert that one. Let's see what else we got. I have options for changing the tone here to be friendly, professional, or concise. I'm most curious about friendly, so let's see. <laughs> I'm super excited about the upcoming release of iPad OS 18. Interesting. And I got to try all three. Professional. Eagerly anticipate the release of iPad OS 18. And concise. It's already pretty concise, I feel like. She'll finally end the endless stream of Reddit comments and social media. Okay. Not my writing style at all, but this is AI, right? So honestly, more humorous to me than anything. So I'm going to switch this other document for the longer form options. This is actually the script of a video I made a while ago, revisiting those seven things that Apple said the iPad had to be good at to justify its existence. 
you should check that video out if you haven't, by the way. It's one of my favorite ones I did. But what I want to do, let's see, can I just do this here? I'm going to select all here. And this is a pretty long note. So I'm going to do this. Right click, go back to our writing tools. And let's, let's see if you can give me a summary of this. This should be interesting. Ooh, okay, not yet available. Okay, fair enough. This is still beta. Let's try these other ones. Key points. Hmm, okay. I kind of, at least that first bullet point is kind of a key point I was going for. The last one, I could see where it infers that too. It's weird it picked out just the web browsing point as a key point amongst all, there's you know, obviously at least seven points in this post, but interesting. Okay. Probably just could have hit back there. Okay. List. Let's try this guy. Hmm. Okay. So it's distilling. You can kind of see it. It's going as I scroll here. It's distilling my entire post into a list of bullet points. But not very well. I suppose that's an advantage Spotify has over Apple today. Okay. I mean, this was a markdown document. I don't know if there's not much formatting, so I'm not sure why it struggled so much there. I don't think period is a point worth making a list item for, but okay. Again, this is beta, so I'm willing to give it some leeway here. But uh, that was interesting. And... I think we had at least one more in the writing tools section. There you go, writing tools. All right, table. Let's just see what that does. Hmm. I feel like this probably would have worked better with a better structured document. Uh, I'm calling this one probably a failure as well. I don't even know what it's doing here. It looks like it just summarized my introduction. And again, it's focusing on that Safari point for some reason, that ignoring everything else. Interesting. So it's a high level of what the writing tools look like today. And I anticipate these are going to get better over the beta. I'm going to try to do a Siri demo here without activating everything in my office which is probably going to fail, but let's try it anyway. All right, first we have the new Siri UI. I'm actually going to cheat and just use the button. You see, that was nice. And as I'm talking, I don't know if you can tell, the animation around the edge of the screen is actually responding to my voice. What time is it? So Siri is supposed to maintain context between requests. So let's try this. What time is it in Paris, France? How's the weather there? What about tomorrow? What's the pollen count today? It got further than I thought it would. So that was actually pretty good, in my opinion. Let's try the whole stumbling over your words thing. Siri's supposed to be able to handle that now. What's the weather in Detroit? I, I mean, Colorado. Seems pretty good to me. Let's see. Apple product knowledge. How can I ask this thing about my iPad? Is there a setting on my iPad that lets me mute all sounds? Tell me about the speakers on my iPad. What megapixel camera do I have on my iPad? Okay, product knowledge does not seem to be working yet. 
Tell me about the camera on my iPad. Okay, maybe not. What I'm really hoping is here is the ability to type to Siri in a way that doesn't require going through accessibility. So in theory, I can double tap the bottom of the screen and Siri will come up. The typed Siri UI will come up rather. Okay. So there's a bar at the bottom. I don't see the interface. I feel like this isn't working yet. So to close the loop on that, I restarted my iPad and it looks like type to Siri is now working. What time is it? Okay, gave it an easy one, that was nice. Let's try uh, mind, mind me to call um, tomorrow. See what that does. There we go. Okay. That looks like it got that and created the reminder as I'd expect. So I think I'll maybe actually make a lot of use of this. This looks really cool. Another of the features I was looking forward to with Apple Intelligence is the ability for Safari to generate summaries of articles. So I'm going to try this on one of my own. Need some formatting work here, but that is a problem for later. Anyway, I'm going to go into the reader menu, and it looks like I have the option to either listen to the page and show the reader view. And in the reader view, I now have a summarize option with the Apple Intelligence logo next to it. So I'm going to tap that. And... By golly, I think it summarized the points I was making, which, yeah, that's not bad. Let's try something harder. Let's go to The Verge. Let's... No idea what this is about. Looks like I have the same options. Show reader. Summarize. I'm going to assume this is correct, because I don't really want to read this article. Speaking of summaries, we also have message summarization in the mail app. So I have this wonderful junk email here that's telling me about the era of private advertising because this is apparently something I'm supposed to care about. If I scroll to the top here, I see I have a new summarize button. If I tap that, we get this loading indicator and it pulls out the relevant information saying that there's a webinar on July 23rd, which of course is no longer relevant to me. Not that it ever was, but still, that's pretty cool because it's a noisy email with a lot of images and, and text and stuff, so pretty cool. Apple Intelligence also powers a new focus mode that's designed to use AI to intelligently manage your notifications and prevent you from getting interrupted if the notification isn't important. So you see that in the focus mode list here in settings, it's called reduce interruptions. And if I tap on that, we have a toggle here that explains the system is going to try to intelligently allow important notifications. So you have the option to toggle this on or off if you just want to use this as a more normal focus mode. You could do that. I'm not sure why you would, but you could. And then you have the other standard focus mode options here for allowing manually allowing people apps a specific home screen and a schedule. So let's turn this on and see if we can get it to work. All right, so I have enabled this focus mode in Control Center. Reduce interruptions is on. I'm going to send myself a text message and see what happens. Sent it. It says delivered quietly on the sending end. Let's pull down the shade and see what we got. Okay, so I have a message. It says it came through in the reduce interruptions focus, which was just me saying this wasn't important. Let me just flip that. Send a message that says, please call. Ah, look at that. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm not mad at that. That's pretty cool, I must say. 
If I put on Notification Shade, I'd say this is prioritized, but I just only, I only sent two messages. Um, let me just send one more that's not important. I sent the message, never mind, it was something stupid. Give it a minute here. I see the badge, the badge, the messages icon. Let's take a peek at the... Okay. Not sure why the second message isn't in this group too, but that is iPadOS notifications for you. But that's cool. At least we can see here if it used the content of the message to determine that this is maybe important. Obviously, it's not super confident, or I wouldn't say maybe, but confident enough to elevate that. And as you saw, I got the notification while this focus mode was on. So that's pretty cool. Just a rough idea of what Apple Intelligence may help improve focus modes. I will add, I should have mentioned before, in 18.1, if you go into any of your focus modes here, you have the same option of intelligent breakthrough and silencing. It would seem you can just apply that to your existing focus modes if you want. So you maybe don't even have to use the reduce interruptions focus mode. More testing will be required, but that's kind of cool. Another intelligence feature would be the addition of transcripts for recorded audio in an app like Notes. So let's try that out. I'll record some quick audio here. Go into the attachment menu, record audio. The M4 iPad Pro has been one of the best computers I've ever used. It's fast, it's light, and it does everything I need a computer to do around writing and running this YouTube channel. It's already generated the preview for me in the note, and you'll see here in the upper right corner of the interface, in the voice memo interface, I have the transcript button, and that shows me a transcript of what I said, which is, I guess, what you would want. If I even had a longer amount of audio, it looks like I could just click on that to get a summary. So I think that's going to do it for this first look at Apple Intelligence on iPad OS. Like I said in the beginning, not all of the Apple Intelligence features that will ship in the fall are enabled yet, and we're still expecting more over the course of the next year. With that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for sticking with me to the end if you did. If you could like the video and subscribe to the channel on your way out, that would help me out a bunch. Make sure to follow me on Threads and Mastodon at SlatePad, and I will catch you in the next one. Take care.